Hey guys, Brendan here. Um, I've got a Nissan Tita that's got a fuel system lean code PO171. Um, quite a simple one it turns out, but I just want to run you through a few basic checks that I did to, to get to the bottom of it and um, what it ends up being. So I'll take you into the scan tool. Okay, so Nissan Tita, um, pulled up the fault code and then um, there's no nowhere in the Nissan data where I can see um, these key PIDs here. So airflow, um, oh, by, by your mass airflow meter, short-term fuel trim, long-term fuel trim, and uh, bank one, sensor one, oxygen sensor. Um, because of that, I'm just trying to get rid of that glare for you. Sorry, it's got the, there you go. Um, because of that, I've gone out to OBD2. So because it's such a, a sort of common code, um, OBD2 is always gonna have these key PIDs here. Now, as we can see, the long-term fuel trim has ramped up to 20, but we're at idle and the short-term fuel trim is actually trying to combat that at the moment. So um, really, this is a, a good running car at the moment. And as you can see, our oxygen sensor at the bottom is cycling nicely. Um, took it for a drive and this thing can hardly get out of its way. I'll give it a bit of throttle now. Just going to hold it up at say 3000 and there you go you, you hear i'm still on the throttle so i'm still on about 50 percent throttle and it just dies basically and you can see the short-term fuel trims are really struggling um we're at about 4000 rpm now and we've only got 12 grams per second or so um, from that mass airflow meter up the top and you'll notice that um, although we're putting in a lot of long-term fuel trim, my oxygen sensor never really went super lean. So a good trick is I went for a, a test drive and foot to the floor, this thing can rev out in all the gears and it um, never goes super lean up at the high RPM, high load, which is a good indicator to me that we've probably got enough fuel flow, but because I'm seeing that um, airflow quite low for high RPM and as you can see, it's sort of much um, better now with the short-term fuel trim um, accounting, and we're back to call it almost zero if you combine your short-term and long-term together at idle. Um, it seems worse when we get more flow. So I'm really suspecting a mass airflow sensor or something of that sort. So we'll go out and just a quick visual inspection. The car's actually just in for a service, by the way, and we've, it's got a check engine light, so we've told them, look, we're gonna need some diagnostics to um, sort that check engine light. You may have even heard the change in the, the engine there. Look at this air filter just from, as part of a service, and look at this thing. So, so blocked that it's um, started to punch a hole through, and it's basically only sucking through this little hole here. Um, first time we've ever seen the car, so I can't tell you how old this thing is, but very old, I would say. If we go back to our scanner now. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same test. So, so as you can see, it's fairly similar to idle because it can handle you know, sucking through that tiny hole in the air filter. If I go up to the higher RPM now, as you can see, we've got a much higher airflow rate, getting up to almost you know, 18 and the short term is really still accounting for it and we're not getting that, that drop off anymore. So basically, when it, it, at idle, it's sucking through that tiny hole in the air filter. Once it gets some higher RPM, higher load to it, um, it's just not enough airflow there and it's uh, causing a, a lean code, surprisingly. I, I kind of would have expected, you know, less air, um, make, make a rich code, but um, I'd say it's distorting the mass airflow sensor readings enough that you know that's what it ends up being. So um, I've, I've done the test drive after and it um, runs perfect if I leave an air filter out of it. Um, so really all this thing needs is an air filter.